Welcome to Sugar River United Methodist Church. My name is Christina Huck, and I'm a member of the worship assistant team. And it's such a blessing to see all of you. We invite you to take a second to check in via the Realm app. And if you have any questions about how to sign up on Realm or to, uh, to get that downloaded, you can check at the Connection Center after church. We also still welcome the blue connection found, blah, blah, blah. we also still welcome the blue connection cards, which are found on the table or in your program, especially if you have prayer concerns, if you're a guest here today, or if you would like more info on any of our ministry areas found on the back. What does authentic patience look like? Did you know that the root word for patience is to suffer? Well, I don't know if I want to be patient then. Yet it is a gift of God's presence, we learn in Galatians, that love is patient and a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Another question might be asked, does my expression of love bear authentic patience? There are lessons in Mary's prayer that have important guidance to the gift of patience in our lives. Authentic patience, authentic love. Please stand as you're able, as you prepare for worship. Maybe give each other a little high. Welcome to Sugar River. Good morning, everybody. My name's William Deke. Please hear these words of invitation to worship. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. True, we're still in Advent, a time of looking forward to the Savior's birth on Christmas Day. The thing is, when we wait, we anticipate, we look forward with hope, and that hope fulfilled is an even greater joy than instant gratification. We appreciate more what we have waited for. Patience adds richness to life. It reminds us to take joy in the journey. Today we light three candles on our Advent wreath, one for hope, one for peace, and now one for joy. This is indeed a season of great joy as we patiently await the promised Savior.
And you may be seated. Christmas time is here, the celebration. And what better way to celebrate that than with a baptism, celebrating the life and the blessings that come into our lives. And so um, uh, I'm going to ask Lila to bring mom and dad up with her as we celebrate uh, this baptism today. And uh, this family is not new to us because uh, we've seen them help us in music in several ways, even online. And so Madison and Alex, it's great to celebrate with you uh, Lila's celebration of baptism today. So baptism is a celebration, uh, but it's also marking, realizing the water, representing the abyss in which life sometimes is difficult. It symbolizes our entering into that, that we may come out cleansed and renewed with new life and a life centered in Christ. This baptismal water is a blessing because in one way, it, uh, we put a portion of the Jordan River in it, which is symbolized, of course, in the baptism even of Jesus. And today we're talking a little bit about the baby John, who becomes John the Baptist, and so it's a celebration today. So dearly beloved, baptism, I love this phrase, is an outward, invisible sign of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which grace we become partakers in the righteousness and heirs and life eternal. Those receiving the sacrament are therefore marked as Christian disciples, initiated into the fellowship of Christ's Holy Church. Our Lord has expressly given to little children a place among the people of God, which holy privilege must not be denied them. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, how he said, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for such belongs the kingdom of God. So Madison Alex, do you in the presence of Lila for holy baptism confess your faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? If so, we do. And do you therefore accept your duty and privilege to live before her the life that becomes the gospel, to exercise all godly care that she be brought up in the Christian faith, that she be taught the Holy Scriptures, and that she learn to give reverent attendance upon the private and public worship of God? If so, we do. And will you endeavor to keep her under the ministering guidance of the church until she, by the power of God, shall accept for herself the gift of salvation and be confirmed as a full and responsible member of Christ's Holy Church? If so, we will. All right, let's see how this goes. Does mom think she's going to hold her? Probably. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Lila James, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can I try? I just want to introduce you to a big family out there. You want to go back to mom pretty quick. I understand that. I'd like to invite the congregation to please stand as you're able. Do you, for, do you therefore today promise to do your best to live before Lila the example of the gospel, to live in ways that honor God and show the grace of God in your lives, and also to commit to support her as she grows in faith, spend time in the nursery or the preschool or in the Sunday school, that uh, she and others may grow in their faith. If so, respond, by the grace of God, we will. Well done, Lila. You may be seated. Thank you for your covenant. And here, have you light? That candle right there. This time we invite the children as they feel comfortable to come forward as Robin leads us in the time of the children's message. All right, children, come on down. I have a rather strange construction with me today, but all will become apparent at some point. All right. So we're going to be talking about patience today. And sometimes it can be hard to see what patience looks like. And I do appreciate that earlier in the service, uh, we, we discovered that patience, the root word of patience, 
also comes from suffering. Sometimes it really doesn't feel good to be patient. And I want to show you this project that I'm currently working on. So I'm knitting a scarf. And basically, what I want to show you is the yarn that I'm using. So look at how thin this yarn is. It is about the same diameter as thread that I'm using. And this is so far how far I've gotten. It's about maybe an inch and a half if I'm being generous. And what I want to do with this is this is the very bottom of a scarf that when I'm done should hopefully look like this, only instead of being in these you know lovely stripy colors, it'll just be in pink. Well, at the current rate of progress, it's going to be take me a very long time to do that because right now, this should make one scarf. And if I were to just keep unspooling and unspooling and unspooling, guess how far I would be able to go until my yarn ran out? I'd be able to go all the way from here over to the icky sticky. It would take, I know. <laughs> Isn't that a really far distance? And, the, and it's so thin that each little stitch doesn't take very much. It's going to take me forever. I'm really going to have to be patient, aren't I? Because, you know, in, in order to actually get something at the end, I'm going to have to persevere, even though it's going to take a very long time. The knitting needles I'm using are a size two. It's terrifying. And you know what's even harder? I have a second ball of yarn. <laughs> same length, same thickness, and everything. So then I have to do it all again. So the moral of the story is take better care whenever you're buying your yarn. And the second thing is that even whenever something seems like it's going to take forever or it might not be worth it at the end, sometimes you just got to have a lot of faith and patience that whenever it gets there, it's going to be something really cool. Can you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you so much for these wonderful children, for the children here and everywhere. We pray that you bless them and keep them and help them to grow in your love and kindness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, children. And we invite the children to attend class. The teachers are back there ready to guide you to where you'll be this morning. If you're a guest today and have children with you, we invite you to uh, go with them to class, find out, settle them in, and come back and join us for the rest of worship. We are so glad you're here. My name is Gary Holmes, and I serve as pastor at Sugar River. And what a blessing to welcome you on this fourth, sun third Sunday in Advent. It's moving right along, and uh, we've had to learn to be patient with it. Um, today's a special day as we celebrate. Uh, not only the advent of Christ renewed into our lives, the promise, uh, but it's also time that we're going to get an update on our MCCI work. Uh, we had some 50 folks here with the MCCI team leading us through discovery and looking, and we're seeking the advent of God's purpose and direction for our lives today. So we're going to hear about that from our district superintendent, Scott Carlson, who's here today. Um, so it's kind of exciting, um, Advent. We've got a lot of knitting to do. There's a lot, but there's purpose and direction, and uh, it'll be a challenge. Um, but patience isn't about ease. And so it's, it's good that we go about this. And so we're going to take a moment now for prayer. Uh, maybe your season's feeling pretty, whole, uh, pretty full and hectic. There's a lot of things coming up, parties to get ready for, uh, work deadlines, whatever it is that's challenging you. Um, but this moment, this is God's gift to you, that you'd open your heart and your spirit to the presence of God and that would speak into your lives because you are valued and loved by God. And it's so good to have you in community, both here present and those who are sharing with this ministry online as well. It is good to have you with us today. So let's begin, I think it's appropriate, with our breakthrough prayer. And hear these words again. Let them speak freshly into your lives, coming from the prophet Isaiah, uh, and, and how God uh, can break into the demands of our lives to allow us to experience the fullness that God intends. So let us begin our time by joining in uh, the breakthrough prayer creative and life-giving God, open our eyes that we may see and embrace the new things springing forth like a river in the desert. Refresh and renew us so that we may have the courage to follow your path and share Christ's love. 
Let's take a moment now. Breathe deep the breath of God in this moment of silent prayer. God of grace and mercy, God of justice, God who offers forgiveness and new beginnings. Thank you for this day that we may gather in your presence. May you be honored in our moment of being here. Thank you for the gift of Christ's love and the advent of your presence continually unfolding. Help us in this season to be patient to trust your love and purpose for our lives. Give us clarity of understanding the direction. Help us be sensitive to the needs of those around us. Help us be active in our patience as we live. We're mindful of the needs today of those who gather for personal needs of, of healing, or a strength, or steps of faith and purpose. For those that might be here who are grasping for a faith that can carry them into the next day. Holy God, be active. Renew us. And thank you for the hope that's found in the birth of this child who grew up to teach and to heal and to proclaim the good news of your love. The kingdom of God is near, God. Give us the strength to step into that truth. Thank you for your love that knows what it means to be committed and to sacrifice so that the wellness, the life-giving reality that's designed and desired for you, to, for all of us to experience is there now. Be with us in the name of Christ as we offer the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. My name is still William. Today's scripture reading comes from Luke. Mary, visit, Mary visits Elizabeth. 
At the time Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, William. So we continue looking at this gift of patience, and uh, as implied, uh, we've already mentioned that uh, patience comes from this sense of suffering. (laughs) And and we kind of know that. As we anticipate this season, we know there's a lot of details to be covered, a lot of preparations. And patience plays that role in us just not getting too hectic, not getting too caught up in the next thing. But something we've learned about patience is that if we understand patience to be just a passive observance or just seeking to have a sense of peace with no action, it leads to a higher level of impatience. And, I mean, if we're waiting for a guest to arrive, which is the nature of Advent and what that means, um, if there's a sense that I don't prepare and I'm not getting the meal ready and I'm not getting the house clean and all that kind of stuff, that can create a lot of anxiety. But a patience in the process is understanding that I'm clear about what I'm called to do. I'm clear what I'm not called to do and have to do. And I prepare. And I just trust God is in the process. And that just allows for us to be healthier. Remember, this gift of patience comes out of a series. Hopefully, some of you have experienced the uh, devotion that comes from uh, Living Compass, which is our, our wellness program, health and wellness, and what that means. And patience plays into delaying gratification, but being intentional of an authentic patience that leads us to do the activity. I can do it. It leads to well-being. It helps us um, when we're dealing with our health, with our mental health, uh, capacity, our mental health, uh, our physical health, and our relationships, patience is, is vital. Because when we, we step into impatience, we know how difficult that can be. I don't know if you've ever been impatient in your life. Um, I've heard about it. Um, don't ask my family on this one. But when we step into that impatience, it really does rob us from our connection with others and, and what it means. So in this season of Advent, May we cling to this gift that God gives us dealing with patience. I just remember that the story of Adam, of course, is that expression of love that's revealed to us. And Advent has its sense of being patient for this reality to be revealed. And if we look at scriptures, we find that and that revelation comes back, even going back to the prophet of Micah. Why did Jesus come and appear? Well, I think in many ways fulfill that call. What does the scripture say? He, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. That's a scripture that I have on my desk at home, and it's a reminder of so much of where we are being called and to live and how to act as those followers of Christ into the world. But that's the very thing Jesus came to do. The problem is that when we see act justly, we think it means I want justice to be placed upon other people. And I want mercy to be offered to me. Amen? I mean, that, that if you're like me, right, it's kind of like looking at grace. I love grace applied to me. Just don't apply it to those people. And we find ourselves in a struggle but being patient, the revelation of God into our lives to, to know what justice means for all of us and what mercy, how it's acted upon all of our lives. And we do it humbly because we don't always have it clearly understood. And we trust patiently upon God's revealing love. Not simply in the birth of a child that we remember, but that revealing love in the moments in which we live. 
patience, power, and beauty comes when we have the end in mind. And to be authentic patience is not a passive endeavor. It is actually an active one. And we look at our scripture today, it just reveals it to us, right? We have the story of Elizabeth and Mary. Elizabeth, who late in years, has been told that she will give birth to a son, John. John the baptizer, who would prepare the way for the one in which Mary would give birth to. Now Mary, of course, she hasn't had a long life of anticipating a pregnancy But in this young teenager, she's been told that God's grace and love would be fulfilled in her giving birth to a child. And she's going, hey, wait a minute, how's that going to happen? Patiently. And she says, but here I am, Lord. May your will be done in my life. And this incredible trust that God would be revealed is is just an example of what it means to live patiently into a God who can can call us and and guide us and, and provide for us for our future need. The story tells us that Mary sets off to visit Elizabeth in our scripture today, read by, I think his name was William. Um, In her old age, she conceived. So here they are, they're both celebrating kind of a really utterly and unanticipated conception children. And what's neat is the story tells us for Elizabeth, as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the scripture tells us, the child in my womb leaped for joy. Elizabeth, upon hearing that Mary had come, the baby within her leaped for joy. John seems to be aware of the significance of Jesus already. These cousins, the story just tells us about the impending blessing and reality that's revealed in these two young children, or these children to be born. And soon John would be saying, prepare the way. And then soon John would be a part of, as they grow 30 years later, uh, would be baptizing Jesus to fulfill the law. And he grew to understand the significance of Jesus. But let's go a little further back, further along in Luke's gospel, the seventh chapter. Here we get to a point now where being in ministry, John finds himself in prison. And his impending future is not very bright. And so you can understand his impatience and asking, he sends the followers that he had to Jesus to ask him, are you the one or should we be waiting, looking for another? Faith and trust is a tough thing. And patience short term is fine, but that long term stuff, it is hard, isn't it? And when we have to face things that we don't quite understand and we're dealing with it, it's natural for us to look for understanding Think of John's situation. I've invested a lot in here. I've eaten a lot of locusts for you. Are you the one? I'm not so sure this is working out the best for me. So what's Jesus' response to when the disciples of John come to visit him and ask? Is it, well, if John had enough belief... He would know I'm the fulfillment of the prophetic word. Because beliefs, right, we think is all it takes. But what's Jesus' tender, gracious response? At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to these messengers from John, go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. He's offering grace. He's offering mercy to John. I think he's telling John that what you've done has fulfilled your purpose. And the call for us to see this incredible understanding of John's impatience, that John does, he's not called to a certain set of beliefs, but to demonstrate that Jesus is living expression of faith, expressing itself in love and care. God's incarnational presence is transformational. Let's step back into Mary's response to the truth that she would bear this child. 
the Magnificat, this prayer of celebration, this hymn that the church would repeat. My soul magnifies the Lord, she says, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, looking upon me with favor. And she's anticipating what Jesus would do. Great things, offering mercy and strength, lifting the lowly, filling the hungry with good things. All such good. And she would trust and live into that purpose. But she keeps, she adds a few other things. I don't know what you, but these are not as easy to hear. She also said that this one would scatter the proud. And they would bring down the powerful from their thrones. That's not a very pleasant experience, by the way. Being brought down from my throne is, is lessons I learn all the time. But it isn't good to know that even in these words of challenge for us is the opportunity for renewal and blessing and possibilities of grace and mercy and love to live. Are we patient with the God who began a good work within us, as we talked about last week? That God will bring it to completion. It's not about ease. Patience is not about a passive endeavor. Patience is a belief and a trust that this gift given to us will allow us to delay the gratification of the moment that we might experience the unfolding blessing of the nature of God's kingdom, marked by the very things that Mary celebrated. Filling people bringing good news, helping the oppressed. Are we patient with God who has begun a good work in us? How is our level of patience? Do we even see this often understanding of uh, being difficult uh, as a gift? Can you imagine, like Mary, what the possibilities are that God could do within our lives, and through us. But it's not only true about our personal lives that God can transform, what God can do. If we can have an imagine going through the challenges we are in the pandemic that we face, the distancing we're called to provide purpose that has no other source. What do we see? Can we imagine what might happen? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we ask in this Advent season that we would patiently wait upon you, but not passively. Give us wisdom. How might this report give us a vision of clarity of how to, to work forward, to overcome the challenges we face as a church community, to overcome the challenges of mask and social distancing, to lead us into a relationship with you and each other that's significant. Advent is a, season, uh, is a season of welcoming, anticipation, but it also comes from the root, root word of adventure. So maybe Advent concerns itself with the new adventure that we draw on into this coming year. So create and life-giving God, open our eyes. Help us embrace the new things. Give us the courage to follow your path. Can we imagine, God, what you might do through us as we seek to be faithful? in the season of celebration of your love being revealed. Amen.
worried about the feedback. Okay. It's such a blessing to have you here today in worship, either online or in person. As we conclude our service, we invite you to take a moment in preparation for offering, either in person or if you're here virtually. It may look a little different to us how we give as an act of worship in response to God's gracious love, but we ask that you use the offering box that is at the table as you exit to present your tithes and offerings. We give proportionally from our income that God might be honored, others may be blessed, and we experience the joy of reflecting the image of God in our lives through our generosity. If you are a guest today, please don't feel obligated to give. Your presence here today is a gift in itself. Many give electronically and through texting 73256. We ask that you pray a blessing upon the gifts that you share and that God would be honored with the stewardship of this church. Please also add your connection card to the basket on the table as you leave today. Also, if you haven't yet, take a moment to check in via the Braille map. And you can contact a staff member or stop at the Connection Center if you have questions about this, and they're happy to help. We invite new guests and anyone seeking info about Sugar River to visit the Connection Center located in the entryway. May our time and service be a blessing to God. Thank you for your prayerful gifts. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, the choir and uh, the orchestra, for blessing us with your gifts. What a blessing. And uh, thank you for your patience with the length of this service. Um, I'm assuming you're being patient. I don't know for sure. Um, but may the grace of God guide you. Please join us next week. We continue um, with this focus on what holy patience might mean and, and how being called apart for a purpose to guide us into meaning in this coming year. Our focus on wellness has such potential for us to be a voice of meaning and purpose, not only into our own wellness, but in the community as well. Faith and wellness. I invite you, please stand as you're able for the sending forth. I pray the Holy Spirit be upon you to renew you, to remind you of your sacred worth, to allow you to have the patience to live fully into God's call as it's being revealed in your life. Be light and love in all that you do. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Amen.